How are you, Baba? It's been ages since I last sat and talked to you. I nearly forgot about my promise to write to you whenever happiness sneaks into my little heart. I'm afraid a letter filled with happiness risks never being written, so let me write to you without conditions. Don't deprive me of the sense of satisfaction I used to get when addressing you. Today marks eleven years since the day you were gone, but only now am I starting to realize how dearly I miss you, how your loss is too awful a beast to conquer. You know you are sorely needed. My only solace is that I know you feel my thoughts. Life has become more painfully complex than getting a good grade in history or going out with Auntie Karama's family. Life is never that simple. What to tell you? Gaza is frustrating these days, well, these years. It's a good exercise in patience, at least. This summer is the worst of all the summers that passed without you. Breathing some good air has become a luxury we cannot always afford. When nothingness takes over, which happens quite too often, I sit in my room, which is fully exposed to the sun, gazing at the tiny mark of the gunshot and the ugly crack it left there. Yes, that very same crack on the wall caused by his rifle. Such an eyesore. Other times I would gaze at it trying to recall how that soldier might look like. That huge creature grabbed you out of my bed and didn't give you the chance to finish my bedtime story. I cannot remember anything but his dusty black boots and the frightening rifle. So many times I tried to imagine how he would look like and always ended up believing he is no more than a faceless monster. Maybe I have gone too far thinking of him, of his life, of his family, of his wife whom he loves, of his smart kid who can get a good grade in math, of him laughing and crying. Baba, what would make this kind of human rejoice over the fact that I am living the agony of being fatherless with an uncompleted story? It is when darkness prevails that I sit by the window to look past all those electricity-free houses, smell the sweet scent of a calm Gazan night, feel the fresh air going straight to my heart, and think of you, of me, of Palestine, of the crack, of the blank wall, of you, of Mama of you, of my history class, of you, of God, of Palestine, of our incomplete story. I enjoy bringing to my mind your tender voice narrating the story of Tha'ir. I still remember how I cheerfully beamed when you told me that Tha'ir and I are so much alike, that he has my wild eyes and I his sheepish smile. I have not yet known who he is or where in life he stands, but I believe I had always trusted your heroes. I can never forget how your dazzling eyes had brightened when you recalled him planting some olive seedlings in the backyard of the orphanage. God bless the smile on your face. God bless the seeds under the ground. I can never forget how you looked me in the eyes and said, He is a boy who lost his whole family to death but never lost faith in life. I want you to be as strong. Baba, do you remember when I asked you if he was strong enough to wrestle an Israeli soldier? You grinned. You always did. But you didn't answer me. You wanted me to figure things out on my own. You told me he was only twelve years old when one of the orphanage girls, Emma, started trembling, hallucinating, and sweating, but nobody there had the guts to break the military curfew, to die. Tha'ir, however, did go out to bring a doctor for Emil, and then... And then hell on earth, Baba. And then you are no more.